the world is going into the darkness and da 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 da, which in appearance, yes, it appears that it's going in that direction. That's true. But yet, in the same time, there is the, the light force, light forces that are battling the dark forces. If you go to like uh, Zoroastrianism, religion of Zoroastrianism, it's talking about the dark forces and the light forces. They're in this constant battle with each other. So as so we are the unique expression of the absolute, but we're not separated from the absolute. Making sense? So, of course, in this life, you until you're fully awakened, until the sense of separation disappears and you lose that sense, until that moment, you don't have a choice rather than acting that you are an individual that you have to preserve yourself and take care of whatever you have to do. You don't have a choice. You're going to do exactly accordingly to your makeup, whatever is your makeup, whatever is your conditioning, whatever is your DNA. Like, for example, I'm going to give you an example. Like, um, like, I am mostly very tidy. I like, I, I like things. I, I can't operate. Let's say if I'm in my my home and it's messy, and there's dishes sitting in the sink, or there's clothes all over, and there's paperwork all over, it drives me crazy. I need to just clean up and put everything correctly to where it needs to be. Not in an extreme way, but I need to be tidy. Then I can work. If I want to do some work, I can't do the work if it's really messy. So I have to tidy things and then I feel good about it. And then I can do my work. But I have a couple good friends that they operate in mess. It's completely messy. Everything is messy. And I would never be able to do that. And I can change myself to be them and they can change themselves to be me. But they're operating and they're running their business, they're running their show, they got family, they do whatever they do, they make money, they pay their bills, but they're messy. They don't mind leaving dishes in the sink, they don't mind, um, you walk into their bathroom, you know, there's like the toothpaste, the top is not connected, everything is all over, you know, you may walk on on uh, some toys of their kids and they have to watch out where you put your foot and things are dirty, you know, and they're fine with it and they're good people, but that's how they live. So it's their DNA. It's their makeup. Or I have, you know, I've been, yeah, you can see that with people who are very stingy. They're very tight, spending money. They're calculating every penny. And then you're around people who are very loose and easy with, with money. And you, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't change the tight one, the stingy one, into being generous and you can't make the generous one to be tight it's just impossible they got their own makeup and that's how they're operating and they're not changeable and these are different expressions of the absolute each person is how exactly life wants to express itself in that form in that time 
And as you're waking up and you're coming to this higher level of consciousness, you begin to recognize that. You begin to realize. And as you recognize that and you realize that one of its benefits is peace begins to take over. Inner peace starts to come. Because you have expanded your consciousness, you have elevated your awareness, your consciousness, you're going to a fifth dimensional, to a 5D consciousness of the unity consciousness, of the oneness, a place of no separation. And peace comes, acceptance comes, surrender comes. Was it helpful, uh, Danielle? Yeah. Feel free if you have any other questions, we welcome it. Ms. Hilda, so you brought up this topic. You have any questions, my dear? Hi. Hi. Nice seeing uh, you. Yeah, you thank you. We haven't talked for a while. I haven't uh, seen you for a while. Nice seeing you too. Uh, you know, I grew up with the old parents and I was the only, the, the only ch child, you know, and they were uh, always afraid of me. Don't do this and don't do that. And when I got the, the arthritis, they turned into be more afraid, you know, don't hurt yourself and take care of everything. So they love me, but I feel that I might be lived in a prison of love, you know. In a what? Prison of it, what? Prison of love, because they love me so much. So don't do this and don't, and don't do that. So you can hurt yourself. You know, so I, I understand that my fear was that uh, was uh, the way they fought and they act and it was they fear that they gave me in so to speak yeah you know yeah yeah and i mean always told me that oh but you are doing this and you're not afraid of some something but i become a kind of rebellious because of that you know because i won't i didn't want to live like that you know i yeah yeah Hmm. Yeah, well, it's, you know, I, again, I grew up with parents who were fanatic in fear. Yeah. And uh, it was very uncomfortable. <laughs> and of course, I mean, I was a very good, obedient boy, very quiet till age 12. And then around age 12, they changed my school. And they put me in this other school that was kind of hostile. And, and all of a sudden, I had to go into this mode of preserving myself. So I had to change myself, becoming a bad boy. And, and uh, to protect myself from really being a good boy who was very quiet and obedient um, coming from this place of um, being protected. And all of a sudden, it's like I find myself in this jungle <laughs> and it's violent. And, uh, and I wasn't a tough guy. It wasn't my personality. I wasn't angry. I wasn't tough. So then I remember I started going, taking karate classes and uh, and start beating out of other kids or start bugging other kids or just to, to mask this, to cover it. I had to become aggressive with other children. So they leave me alone. They find me like he's a tough guy and we're not gonna mess with him to protect myself. It wasn't because I was tough. 